Hi, I'm Seth Newman and welcome to the UP Oakland Sub. This video will help you prepare to operate on the Oakland Sub by covering a bunch of items you'll need to know. For a comprehensive layout tour, check my Bay Rails page or go to YouTube and search for Seth Newman Oakland Sub. Starting with the orientation, west is to the right, so uh, you're looking at the layout from the northwest. Uh, the layout runs from Pleasanton in the northeast to uh, Milpitas in the southwest. The hidden track uh, behind the layout is either the uh, Niles sub or the Milpitas sub, depending on where you are on the layout. There are diagrams like this located around the layout and uh, on the backdrop to help you uh, understand where you are. And you'll notice it uh, has each of the station names so you can fairly easily uh, determine where you are on the layout. This is a CTC layout, so the uh, traffic is controlled by signals. Uh, there are signals uh, at every control point, and uh, an example would be here at East Hurst. We have uh, the triad of signals, and we have a relay shed, which is marked with the signal or the control point name, which in this case will be CPF for Oakland Sub uh, 039, which is the mile post. There's also a repeater above the layout, which is handy if there are people in the way or you're color challenged and uh, can't read the searchlights easily. The signals on the repeaters are set up as type D signals. Note the electric switches, or the dispatcher control switches, have uh, switch machines castings on them. Uh, you don't need to touch them, they're fragile, we've already determined that. If you want to operate them, uh, call the dispatcher for permission, and then you can operate them using these slide switches located down on the fascia. And then the uh, points move with your finger, so if you're the, you want the points to move towards you, you pull the switch out. If the label is white, it's a dispatcher-controlled switch, which the dispatcher can throw. If it's goldenrod or yellow, that indicates a switch that's controlled by the dispatcher's lock. Now, there's also a few switches on the layout that are motorized simply because they're hard to reach. In those cases, they will not have a control point number, but they'll still be yellow uh, to indicate they're not dispatcher-controlled. Every switching area is protected by its own circuit breaker, so uh, if you short, you don't bother your neighbor and vice versa. If there is a short, you will look up on the layout and you will see that there are these indicator LEDs that will be lit if a section is shorted, and there's labels so you can see which one it is. Uh, usually you'll know because the uh, uh, track will be making a little chick noise and your rail, your locomotive will be uh, jerking forward if it's moving at all. For local switching in, in most towns, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. Uh, we talked about dispatcher controlled switches and that's important on the main, but when you're not on the main, you have uh, locally controlled switches and they're almost always done with slide switches here and you just press the slide switch uh, the way you want to go, that locks the points in the proper position and uh, uh, sets the polarity on the frog. Now, almost all of these towns don't have their own runarounds, so generally you'll need to use the nearest siding as a runaround and use the main as a lead. And that's okay, just communicate with DS58, that's your dispatcher, and request the, uh, uh, the track and he will uh, protect it for you. Uh, so, uh, pretty much when, you're, uh, when, when you want to work off the main, you need to get permission for that chunk of the main, and uh, you can control the industry switches yourself. All the major locals switch the Pleasanton Radom area, and to do that, you will need to use this switch, the Radom lead switch, up here, notice it's marked with a yellow dot, which tells you it's uh, dispatcher controlled or dispatcher released. And you will need to use one of these dog bone throttles because you'll probably want to break your consist and go in with one locomotive only. 
Also, while you're working in the area, you may need to, to prevent your cars from rolling away by using these track weights, uh, which will hold the cars and prevent them from rolling down the lead. Pleasanton is a fairly typical work area, and I thought I'd point out the features of each of the workstations. Uh, first of all, there's Velcro, and each of the throttles has Velcro on the back, so you can hang your throttle up here out of the way, and also your clipboard. Now, each town or uh, industry area also has a, a track plan, and the track plan shows what's on the town, it shows the location of the town on the map, and it also gives the length of each siding in the number of the type of cars that are likely to be there. So, for example, Rickert Lumber here typically takes 60-foot cars, and it tells you that there's enough room for two of them. So that's a handy thing for planning your moves. Also at each workstation, we have uh, picks. We use the uh, number 16 darning needles in plastic. And we have a drink holder, and this is suitable for coffee cups, uh, water, cans, whatever. And you can leave your drink there, uh, pretty much drink whatever you like, just try and keep it off the scenic part of the layout. So every job has a clipboard associated with it, and on the clipboard you will have uh, the name of the job, a short uh, description of the job, if you want the more complete description, you can go to the rules and uh, procedures on the website. Uh, and switch lists. Now, very often you'll have two for the locals, one for your pickups and one for the setouts. The other thing you'll have uh, on the back of the clipboard, or I should say on the front behind the switch lists, are uh, engine and caboose cards, and those give you the complete list of functions uh, if you'd like to you know, use all the sound effects or the various lighting effects. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you would use uh, the headlights and the horn and blow for the grade crossings. Uh, everything else is pretty much up to you, but uh, try not to leave the bell on too long. It gets a little bit annoying. Almost every train eventually ends up in Milpitas, so as you enter Milpitas, you may need the yard lead. Um, one of the things you'll, you'll, you'll need to do is enter it at the... Uh, warm springs end. So if you need to control that or check that from the Milpitas side, there's a yard lead indicator here on the fascia. You can also look into the yard office and there's a pair of LEDs, red if it's lined for the lead and green if it's lined for the main. When you arrive in Milpitas, you'll find that there's no yard master because there's no dedicated switcher, but there is a clerk. So you'll go into the office and talk to the clerk and give him your switch list and probably get a new one. Now, if you're driving a yellow locomotive, uh, you're pretty much uh, on call to do what the clerk requests of you. And one of the things you may need to do is switch uh, the paper box warehouse uh, Smurfit Stone. The control is uh, a manual control in that it's not uh, dispatcher controlled, but there's actually a motor there because it's hard to reach, so you'll use this uh, switch down here. Coming down to the west end of Milpitas, there are several switches you may need depending on the job you're working. Um, the first one is the Duradon station uh, staging panel, and this is used by the Altamont Commuter Express train. Generally, the dispatcher will throw it for you. Uh, it does have an indicator which indicates when you're at the end of track. There's also a monitor above the Duradon area that you might use. Coming a little further back, there's another remote switch for Waukesha Electric, and that's a uh, transformer manufacturing plant uh, that you may need to handle. Uh, it's just a little hard to reach, so we provided a remote switch. Uh, the West Milpitas yard lead switch is next. Again, that's used for the arrival departure track, which is sometimes used as a siding right above there. Um, more picks, more cup holders. Then the last thing is the uh, water plant gate. And the water plant has a uh, servo controlled gate, which can be uh, opened if you need to uh, move the chlorine tanks out of the water plant. Uh, and then you can restore them uh, from the uh, same switch. 
The NUMI job and the BNSF local will be working in the NUMI uh, snowboy area. A uh, couple of things to remember there is uh, the various industry tracks are protected by these blue flags and that means you'll need to contact the clerk or the superintendent who will act as the business owner uh, to have permission to pull the blue flags. When you're done, they'll be restored. So you can only work on the tracks that don't have blue, f that, that don't have blue flags. Uh, when you're not working on it, we presume that people are working in there and you can't go in and uh, uh, switch while uh, uh, plant crew are working. Uh, another thing to consider in here is that there's not a lot of room for uh, runarounds internally. So you'll probably need to use the siding and perhaps the switches out to the main. And for that, you'll call a DS-58 and get permission. Snowboy is a bulk transfer facility, kind of a modern team track. And it's switched by the third NUMI pull, the third time NUMI leaves the yard and goes out to work and also later in the afternoon by the uh, uh, BNSF trackage rights local. So there's a little bit to be aware of here. First of all, uh, you need to pull the blue flag to work, but uh, then there is an off-spot track. These are cars that are waiting to be spotted and uh, there's no room for them in the, in the main part of Snowboy. Each track or tracks has a dedicated purpose, whether it's general tank cars or uh, uh, covered hoppers, there's an acid car track, and uh, a chlorine track. So when you go in to work in Snowboy, you will first uh, pull all the cars you're going to lift and probably drop them over here on the drill track. Then uh, you'll respot the cars that are waiting on the off-spot track and finally set out any cars that you may have brought in uh, to Snowboy. If you have extras, uh, you set them over on the respot track. Behind me is the uh, Irvington area, and as you can see, it's a little torn up during this video, so we're not going to go into a lot of detail there, but we uh, are rearranging it as primarily Lehigh cement, and one end of the crossover that goes from the hidden track into the visible track. But over here in Niles, we have the other end of the switch, which is where you come out of the Niles sub and then cross over onto the visible track. And the uh, switch, if you need to operate it manually, is here. And again, there are indicators that show you the state of the switch, whether it's uh, red, uh, reversed, or green, uh, normal. Uh, in addition, there's a mirror that is over the backtrack that shows you the turnout where uh, trains will be diverging from the hidden track onto the visible layout. There's also a talking detector back there that will uh, report at uh, milepost uh, NIO 10 uh, that'll let you know when a train goes back there so you won't be surprised if something comes out. There are several industry switches that are uh, controlled here and this is typically worked by the uh, uh, LRV 54 local and the BNSF local, uh, the West Niles Canyon uh, railway switch, uh, the Niles industrial switch, and the uh, brickyard spur. And these switches are controlled by the uh, crews of the locals when they need to work in those areas. Moving east from Niles, we come to the west end of her siding at uh, control point FO38. That is uh, obscured somewhat by a hill uh, at the entrance to Niles Canyon. So what we've got are uh, LED indicators uh, for the position of the switch, green for the main, red for the siding. And then there's also another mirror so you can see the position of the hidden switch. One thing I thought I'd mention at this point is that we do have fast clocks. Uh, up at both ends of the room so that you should always be able to see one or the other. Uh, we run a two-to-one clock. Uh, it's mostly to just keep you apprised of how we're doing in the session because we're not on timetable and train order and there's no authority conveyed by the clock, but it's handy to know. Okay, here's Radom, which is the beginning of the visible layout as you come out of uh, staging. Uh, a couple of things happen here. 
there is a sand spur, which was actually the old Western Pacific sand loading operation, and we imagine that the uh, BNSF trackage rights local is the train that handles that. So they use the sand spur switch, which again is a yellow switch. The dispatcher has to unlock it, but can't throw it for you. And you'll be uh, lifting uh, loads of uh, locomotive sand and uh, setting out uh, empty hoppers. The inner part of, of the operation that handles the sand and gravel is actually served from radom on the other side, which we just talked about. Um, the uh, Kaiser switcher will uh, take care of pulling the hoppers and loading the, uh, the gravel cars, and when he's done, the 54 local will come down and lift them. Uh, there is a tail track for the uh, tipple track, although generally you don't need it. You can generally work it all from the uh, rate demand. Well, thanks for uh, watching so far, and uh, I know you won't remember everything when you get here, but hopefully you won't be completely lost when you show up at the uh, op session at the Oakland Sub. I hope to see you soon. <laughs> How did you get so strong, Arnold? Uh, do you drink milk every day? No, milk is for babies. I drink beer. <laughs> and I grew up the maid. <laughs> You're missing great bloopers, man. <laughs> Don't drink enough beer. Although I guess yeah. I have to drink Irish. I, I like beer. I like, I I like, like beer. 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 Beer, beer, beer. <laughs> beer whiz beer. It's in the water. That's why it's yellow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, how are you going to do this without laughing? Um, okay. I, I am going to take a deep breath and compose yes. myself.